Tell me something I don't know about refereeing in a minute. Oh, where do we start? You know, we have an open side and a closed side on fighters. Referees need to understand what the open side is, and the open side is going to change depending upon what the fighter's doing and where they're at. And we always want to have ourselves on the open side of the fighter that either is in trouble or we're going to be the open side of both fighters so we can see what's going on because if we're on the closed side, we don't see it and then we're guessing. But this is things that people don't understand. Here in Los Angeles, Bellator 170 with legendary MMA referee Big John McCarthy. Big John, good to, good to talk to you. Good to talk to you. You know what legendary means? Yeah. But, old. Well, old, but, <laughs> but, but aging well, I think. Right? Okay, like, I like, think like nobody ages poorly and still claims legendary status, know, right? right? Well, they claim it. But, <laughs> but this is a sport that reveals those people eventually, right? When, it when, does, when quickly. They, and there's two, there's two legendary guys who are going to be fighting you know, in, the, in, this, in this fight coming up, and we'll get into that. But first of all, just a, a, about yourself, when you first started refereeing MMA fights and MMA first started taking off, and this is going back, what, 25 years probably at this point? Yeah, it is, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> and that's just the televised side. There was probably some non-televised stuff oh, yeah. before that. Did you ever in a million years think that your career in MMA would, would reach the lengths that it has right now? No. You know, I always, in the beginning, I, I, I was like, why do people not understand what they do? Why are they not grabbing onto it the way they should? And then it started to, and people started to get it, and I was like, yes. I, you know, from the moment I started doing what was we call, you know, Dali Tudo, I fell in love with it. And I was like, this is, this is it. This is the real thing. This is what's important. You know, I've done all kinds of things before, but I was like, how can someone not fall in love with this open, free form of combat? And when we started to have a lot of problems, you know, some people know the problems, but we had a lot of problems early on. From UFC 8 on, you know, we had a lot of people trying to close us down. We were the bad guys. And it, it it always, it was always this thing that I was, I learned a lot from it. I learned, you know, people's perceptions are different than what reality is. And when someone has a perception, they believe they're, they're telling the truth, even though they can be completely backwards and yeah. wrong. Yeah. So it made me a smarter person, it made me a, you know, a smarter man, as far as how to deal with problems, how to deal with people, and everything like that. But I never thought the sport would get to the level that it is. You know, I, I would have been a liar if I said, oh, I knew it was going to get there. No. There was a certain point I said, it's going to make it. Because there was a while where it was like, I wasn't sure that it was. And I thought, you know, is this the year that it ends? Because there was times it was close to that. But it got to a certain point in a certain time, somewhere right around UFC 40, that I looked and I said, it's going to be. People are starting to get it. It's going to continue. And it's grown to a point where it's incredible. And I'm just proud that I'm part of it. Biggest thing you've learned about yourself, the biggest thing you've learned about MMA since you've been here. <laughs> wow, biggest thing I've learned about myself. How has it changed you? Oh my God. You know what, I tell people all the time, I have lived a life, I'm never going to be rich. I don't care about being rich. You know, monetary doesn't mean anything. But I have lived such a rich life because of MMA. I've been more places, done more things, and been part and seen and met more people because of the sport of MMA that I ever thought I would ever be able to. And so it has enriched my life, you know, in a way that nothing else would have done the same. So. It's inauguration season. Somebody's going to get a new job tomorrow, starting a new chapter of their lives. If you could walk away from this, <laughs> do anything else in the world, that if you could have spent the last 25 years doing anything else other than refereeing MMA, what do you think you would have done? What would you have wanted to do? Oh my God, man, that's a, that's a, that's an impossible. I, I I don't I don't think you should re, you know look back and have you know thought I should have done something different. I was lucky enough to fall into something that I loved, and I was lucky enough to, to help be part of that and to make it grow. And whatever people think and whatever they know about the truth of how things happened in MMA, I was lucky enough to be part of that. That's, I, I wouldn't change any of that. Yeah. Got a legendary fighter, Tito Ortiz, fighting tomorrow night, and so uh, Saturday night. Bellator 170, we're here in Los Angeles. Uh, Sonnen versus Ortiz. 
Oh, uh, your favorite Tito Ortiz moment from over the years. Do you have one that, that stands his last fight? Do you have one that, that stands out as being the, the quintessential Tito Ortiz moment? You know, I have uh, I've been around Tito since he was a teenager. And you know, I've spent a lot of time around Tito. Christ, I've done twenty of Tito's fights or so somewhere in there. And uh there's been a lot of moments of it, you know. I remember when Tito was young and you know, we were flying on a plane back from Brazil. He stood in the back and talked, and we talked about his career, and we talked about what he should do. And, you know, moments like that, but the, the thing that, you know, everyone gets, a, again, a perception. And Tito created a perception based upon you know, Nicky Beach and all that stuff. But the thing that I will always remember about Tito is Tito, when he would spend time with fans, he cared, and he spent time with kids, and he would never walk away from one. He wanted a picture, wanted an autograph, wanted to talk to him. He was absolutely what our sport needed as far as that fan interaction and getting people interested. He was outstanding. And that's always been my perception of Tito. That, you know what? He had a lot of things that people could look at and you know, complain about or say, oh, I didn't like what he said here. But when he came to the fans, he was absolutely top of the